This is Cameron Chai from azom.com and I'm speaking to Michael Hashka from Bruker and he's going to tell us about their micro x-ray fluorescence instrument range. Uh, Bruker starts recently with a new product line, uh, micro x-ray fluorescence. Uh, we uh, have here three different, uh, different instruments. Uh, we start with a very small one. Uh, in that case, uh, we have a uh, spot size in the range of 0.3-0.5 millimeters. Excitation from top uh, it will be possible to analyze in that uh, way very small filigree parts. For example, jewelry. Uh, the uh, value of the jewelry depends very strongly on the content of gold uh, in the alloy, and that can be analyzed with that instrument very exactly with an accuracy in the range of 0.2-0.3%. If we uh, look for the next instrument, uh, then uh, uh, the physics is very similar, but here we have a little bit more comfort. That means we have a stage which can position the sample automatically. We have also here the possibility for a detector with higher energy resolution, which means that, for example, uh, traces can be detected and also uh, coatings can be analyzed, coating thickness down to a few nanometers. Uh, in the moment, the last instrument in this series is the M4 Tornado. Uh, here we have a high-level instrument which has a vacuum chamber, a large vacuum chamber for samples up to uh, 30 centimeters large. <coughs> Uh, we excite here uh, with help of a uh, capillary optic which concentrates the radiation down to 25 microns. Uh, detection will be done with an uh, X-flash detector which means high energy resolution and very high count rate capability uh, and that allows uh, to make a very exact analysis, element analysis but also coating thickness analysis. Uh, not only in one spot, uh, due to the uh, uh, motorized XYZ stage, it's also possible to make distribution analysis, for example, on a line or on, a, on an area. That means we can make line scan or mapping uh, and have a picture of the element distribution of an inhomogeneous sample. And that's what the biggest difference is between a micro XRF compared to a standard XRF, is it? Uh, the difference uh, in between a micro XRF and a normal XRF is that in a uh, normal XRF we analyze an area of 2 centimeters approximately. That means the sample should be relatively homogeneous. But typically, most of the uh, uh, technical materials are not homogeneous. And uh, the advantage of a uh, micro XRF is that you can measure non destructive this inhomogeneity of the sample, uh, both in, in all, in all uh, directions, that means in the plane of the sample, but also uh, due to the possibility to measure uh, coating thickness, you can also measure uh, into the sample uh, and see the inhomogeneity. Okay, and as far as sample preparation is concerned, you, you, you can put a, a, a whole component into the machine? Uh, sample preparation in that case is relatively easy. Uh, you can say it's nothing uh, because uh, you, we measure from top with a very small spot. We will find typically everywhere one uh, area which is relatively flat and can be measured directly without any preparation. That means you can also measure, for example, art objects uh, or forensic objects uh, which should not be changed because you like to measure the art objects as it is. Uh, this is a big advantage in comparison to normal XRF uh, instruments. And what other applications do you find these micro XRF instruments being sold into? Uh, there are uh, different applications. I talked already a little bit about forensic applications, art objects, failure analysis, uh, microelectronics everywhere where you have an inhomogeneous sample and a distribution of different elements of different coatings or whatever it is possible to make this type of analysis you have to take into account that the spot size is really only 25 microns that is a third of the diameter of an, an hair 
which is really very, very small, and you can analyze this very exactly. All right, Michael, thanks very much for introducing us to your Micro XRF range of instruments.